Fantastic. Now, Babajit, I have more questions. And yeah. uh, my second question to you. Yes. Is on planetary debilitation. Yes. Now, can you tell us, you know, people are scared about debilita- scared about planets being debilitated in their horoscope. Okay. Yes. Uh, but there are others who say there are others who say you know debilitation is not bad at all. Uh, mm. It just makes you work harder in those areas, and probably if you work harder in those areas, you will be uh, also successful in the area where the planet is debilitated. Now, can you tell me what is uh, you know what is the the result of debilitation, and how do you handle a planet if it is debilitated in a horoscope? How do you behave if a planet is debilitated? What should you do? Yeah. So. First of all, when you talk of debilitation, it is very important that we segregate the sign of debilitation from the house that it represents in the original zodiac. Okay. For example, suppose you say Jupiter is debilitated. Where is yes. Jupiter debilitated? In Capricorn. <laughs> Correct. That is okay. But you should not say Jupiter is bad in the 10th house. Jupiter in the 10th is fabulous. So first of all, when you go to debilitation, because debilitation is about signs, right? It is not about the houses. So we have to learn to differentiate the houses from the signs. So let me give you an example, another example. Venus gets exalted in Pisces. Okay. (laughs) But that doesn't mean Venus is good in the 12th house. Yes. I mean, there can be other things which make the Venus good. The seventh house can be good or whatever, but... Uh, You should not, nobody should say that, oh, Venus is in the 12th house where it originally gets exalted. No, it doesn't get exalted there. It gets directional strength in the 4th house. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's the problem basically? Debilitation as the word says, Nietzsche. Yes. Nietzsche means it is like a person who is suppressed, (laughs) compressed. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Which means, in a sense, we have not got the right training to deal with that area. Yes, or we have evaded those areas. Okay. For, for example, let me give, uh, say say with examples here. Suppose Jupiter is debilitated in Capricorn. Now, yes. why does it get debilitated in Capricorn? There are videos in YouTube which will say, oh, it is a sign of Sunny. That is why it de- gets debilitated. Sunny is the Shudra. Mm. Well, that is okay, but uh, Capricorn has a lot of positive things also. Yes, mm. but why does it get debilitated? What mm. is that one problem in Capricorn which completely throws away Jupiter out? Mm. What is mm. that problem? The problem mm. is Capricorn doesn't have emotions. <laughs> okay. Capricorn, Capricorn is more of a lifeless sign. And that is why Mars gets exalted there. Because when a soldier wants to do something, he cannot think of, oh, what's, who, who is my mother? Who is my father? Because if mm. he keeps thinking of all those, then that's it. He will not be able to fight. So which means that when Jupiter is in Capricorn, we see Jupiter in Capricorn can mean many things. But what I'm saying here is in essence, it can mean that when we are doing spiritual practices, we are doing it just like a routine formality without any involvement of our heart because it gets exalted in cancer. Yes. yes. And yes. cancer is what basically? Cancer is not heart. Yes, it is the heart. Yeah, it's the sign of the heart. Yes, emotions. The most important thing of cancer is it is the sign of emotions. Yes. And fourth house has components like luxury and all this. So Jupiter in the fourth can have a different flavor than Jupiter in cancer. Yes. Now, that means suppose somebody has Jupiter in Capricorn, then you say that's debilitated. Whatever you say, 0 to 3 degrees or 5 degrees. Irrespective of that, the flavor of Jupiter's debility will be there. Which means mm. that if you have that, then you don't have to panic. You simply, now from today you make a decision that whenever you do some spiritual practice, you don't do it as an official uh, practice. Which means, oh, I have to chant these mantras. Now I will just sit and chant Om Namah Shiva. That's it. No. You try to, and that will be a bit difficult for you because it is debilitated, which means you have not been doing it from millions of lifetimes. So it will be naturally difficult for you. But from today, you make a decision that I will try to improve and bring the traits of exaltation into that planet. Yes. So for example, what Venus is. Venus gets debilitated in Virgo. What is Virgo basically? 
if you see there's something very interesting if you make virgo the ascendant yes <laughs> then the lagna lord virgo is the only lagna where the lagna lord will get exalted in the own, own sign own house <laughs> yes that means the problem or the trait with virgo is that they are too much self obsessed <coughs> okay yes and venus is the planet which which is least comfortable in that area imagine going into a relationship with a partner or imagine you behaving like that mm -hmm. oh i will only think of myself i don't mm -hmm. care what you want then mm -hmm. how is the relationship yes mm -hmm. <laughs> and the other sign is pisces which shows that okay whatever i am i will pisces is a very all encompassing sign yes so if somebody has venus in virgo whatever happens to you that is fate destiny remedies that we already spoke but from today you make a decision that i will not behave like that with my wife or with the members of the opposite sex yes i will try to give them space i will not behave as if uh, i am the only one who is supposed to uh, get things in a relationship yes because relationship is basically what giving taking that uh, that thing has to be there so we have to understand that so these are the things we can do basically the first thing we have to do when a planet is debilitated is we don't have to panic we have to simply understand that uh, we have not proper we have not channelized the energies properly and from today we make a decision that we will try to go in the other side so when we change the attitude half of the problems are all, already solved so and we learn about the exaltation signs yes and then we try to involve and bring those traits of the exaltation sign into that planet whichever planet that is debilitated or whatever you call it weak or whatever it is so then what happens is even though we may face challenges but in the next lifetimes yes or you may say within the later phases of this life itself we will see that we have had a lot of improvements in that area yes okay. so that's the thing we need to see what's the trait of the exaltation sign and we need to bring those traits into our life pertaining to that planet so for example okay. if jupiter is in capricorn when just going to the temple will not help yes you have to go to the temple and you have to try to connect to god like a person because mm. emotions you don't have towards your mobile phone right <laughs> emotions are towards only a person now you may like the mobile phone that's a different thing but when you say i have emotions that means that you have emotions towards a person so you have to always understand first of all that god is a person so you cannot just uh, go on demanding things from god as like okay and i will do this ganesh puja ganesh ji will give me this uh, shiva will give me that so it can't happen that way so we have to emotionally try to uh, connect we have to uh, read the scriptures the stories yes by that we will understand what lord ram did he was also a person like you and me although his supreme personality of god at himself but then we will uh, realize because cancer is what basically is the sign of the mother so how does the mother behave with the child yes the mother is to <clears throat> totally selfless yes correct the mother doesn't think oh night three o'clock now if the child is giving a kick to her face the mother doesn't think oh see this child is so bad he or she is kicking me no the mother is always ready the mother is ever ready and the mother is very happy to do spiritual uh, i mean to take care of the child so that's the situation jupiter likes very much yes and that is why the guru is the highest uh, well wishing friend as they say no because guru is in line with god so uh, guru is the highest well wisher so another remedy we could do is we could uh, serve our guru properly or first of all we should accept somebody as the guru and then we should render personal service by that we can develop a connection so these are things we can do and for mercury is the opposite mercury doesn't like those things like pisces oh just do whatever you want yeah 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 so if mercury is in pisces it does not mean that you don't have intelligence i don't know from where this has come but because for intelligence you have to see other things you have to see what's the situation of the fifth house yes you have to see so many things so when mercury is in pisces we need to make sure that we maintain a reality check on our finances especially <laughs> and we take and whichever planet is debilitated we can always seek higher guidance regarding that planet okay so suppose mercury is debilitated whenever you are making some financial decision take others into consideration others means don't go on asking 10 people then again you will get confused but one or two people or at least one person should be there who you trust in financial matters and when you are doing something 
take advice from them or when you are submitting some document then maybe you can ask them to cross check or whatever whatever is comfortable for you you can do accordingly but you can always seek higher guidance because when you seek higher guidance anything is possible <laughs> And then uh, for Mars, I already said, we should not be thinking, oh, who is my mother, who is my father. When we are taking Mars into consideration, it gets exalted in Capricorn, which means we do our duty diligently. Either we like it or we don't. So that is what uh, I would say. Sun, sun, sun. Yeah. So for Sun, I would say. Sun. Yeah. So what happens with Sun? Sun gets debilitated in Libra, right? <laughs> See, this is a very funny thing. Now sun also sets in, sun also sets in the seventh house, but why does it get debilitated there? Yes, because Libra is the sign where we are losing our sexuality. Yes, so any time you will see a man or a woman who is too much indulging in sexuality, that person is totally headless. That person has no goal in life. Now that that, that can be less or more depending on other things, but when mm. sun is in Libra, we have to understand that. A significant part of our life we had spent in enjoying and delighting with the opposite sex in our past lives. Yes. So because of that, what happens is we are used to getting validation from the opposite sex. Yes. Basically, what sun is? Sun says, I am there. Whoever is there, I don't care. Yes. Yes. I will come on time. Moon is there. Saturn is there. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I will come up when I want. But what Libra is? Libra is other people. So when you indulge too much with the opposite sex, then what happens? You are used to their validation. Yes. Oh, you are doing good. She is nice. You are good. <laughs> so when you get used to doing things only when others validate you, then your situation is precarious because then you will feel, oh, I can't do anything myself. <laughs> and that's what happens when sun is in Libra. Yes. So now the remedy for these people is very simple that you try to, uh, you, you don't seek validation too much from others. If you don't, don't get obsessed with all these selfies, na, Instagram and so many other things are there. Na. So try to do meditation. Yes, because if you see that sun gets exalted where it gets exalted in Aries. And this is also something important, which we have to see that if you make Leo as the ascendant, yes, then if you take the Multricon sign, then sun gets exalted where from the ninth house because for uh, leo ascendance aries is the ninth house so that means if somebody has a sun which is debilitated in libra then if they do spiritual activities then naturally things improve yes and similarly is for the moon yes so moon gets debilitated in scorpio what is scorpio basically scorpio is nothing but fear yes yes so when fear enters your mind that's it Total destruction. And if you want to know about Moon and Venus, you have to go to Ramayana. Without that, you can't understand Moon Venus. <laughs> so what happens is, I will just say in short, this Kaikai story is there. Yes, Kaikai yes. was said by Mantra that oh, what Kaikai did basically, she said, uh, Ram will be the king now, and then you will become maid servant of Ram's mother, Kaushalya. Yes. Mm. That means what did she do? Mantra just did two things. She invested um, fear into the mind of KK. And the second yes. thing she did is she said, why Ram? Why not your son? Mm. And what is that? That is expectation. So expectation is which sign? Virgo. And fear is yes. which sign? Scorpio. <laughs> so the Ramayana is explaining why sun, why moon gets debilitated in Scorpio. Oh. And Venus, why does it get debilitated in Virgo? Yes. So that means if you want to destroy a woman, just do two things. You don't have to do much. <laughs> you just give her, give some fear to her mind. She will automatically be destroyed because she will lose the peace of mind. Or if you want to destroy Venus, then put expectation. Yes. So you uh, go and tell uh, KK, oh, your son should be the king. Why? Why not? So Fantastic. that is what the Ramayana says that when these two things are there, a woman is completely miserable. And look what happened to KK later on. Yes. In fact, Bharat came and said, I disown you as my mother. You go to hell, you die, you live. I don't care. <laughs> yes, because Bharat never wanted that uh, this happens with him. Yes. Uh, he always wanted that mm -hmm. Ram be the king. So uh, we should be very careful when we hear advice of people because there can be so many people giving advice, but make sure that 
uh, that's not somebody like mantra so that's what happens so if moon is in scorpio we need to make sure that we do not associate with people who give us unnecessary fears yes because some sometimes people come and say are ye hoga wo hoga this happens that happens then that will further uh, put us in trouble so we need to make sure that we maintain a peace of mind what, what is taurus basically taurus is stability nothing more than that so we need to make sure that whenever we are doing some action we are present because taurus is what taurus represents the senses right taurus represents the senses so it represents the eyes ears all those things so it means that whenever you are doing something try to be in the present always don't try to do multi processing oh i am doing uh, mantras also i am using facebook also it doesn't work like that <laughs> so we need to uh, make sure that when we are doing something we are totally into it otherwise scorpio says oh be in the past yes and virgo says oh be in the future yes keep expecting this will come that will come and geeta says that there are two things which are detrimental for a yogi what is that one is hankering the other is lamentation yes these two are very dangerous oh okay hankering is what basically i want i want i want i want i want oh that girl is very beautiful i want her oh that boy is very handsome i want that boy yes and lamenting is what basically oh i lost him i lost her so this scorpio and virgo these two traits are very detrimental for our happiness because these two destroys moon and venus so we need to take care that we do not get too much into past or future zone we need to stay in the zone for present and lord krishna says in the gita brahma bhuta prasanna atma na sochati na kankshati one who does not do sochna and akanksha sochna and akanksha means future or past that person is a uh, prashanta he is very calm he is very peaceful so that's the remedy for uh, moon or venus whatever is debilitated yes so this is how you see debilitation it is not that it is bad and you can't do anything that's totally false <laughs> you know baba jit one of my teachers told me okay that a planet is exalted or debilitated when it is at the exact point of debilitation that is param ucha or param niche okay. or 1 degree after the exact point of debilitation or exaltation or 1 degree before so 1 degree before at the exact point and 1 degree after if it is 2 degrees before and 2 degrees after he said there is no exaltation there is no debilitation oh. and he actually taught me a, a a method a physical method to check oh. now suppose 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 your sun or whichever other planet or somebody's planet let us say moon is debilitated in the 11th house let us say as an example <laughs> then you need to check the leg of the person is there a defect in the limb is there a defect in the leg if oh. there is no deformity or defect in the leg then your planet no matter if it is placed 2 3 degrees here and there there is no debilitation or there is no problem with that okay planet. because 11th because, house is the leg that's why you are saying yeah yeah so similarly oh. you know if a planet is placed in the fourth house is there a is there a uh, debilitated in the fourth house is there a problem in the chest area is there a problem in the oh. heart if there is nothing then there is no debilitation the planet is not acting debilitated so that's a physical technique to check which i learned but baba ji today you've really you know uh, uh, talked uh, very significantly about how to deal with the debilitation you are saying that don't worry if a planet is debilitated you your own behavior should be like the exaltation of that planet yes how you would have behaved if the planet were exalted behave like that and your planet will also probably improve over a period of time yeah and here one last thing i would like to say <clears throat> many people will say oh uh, my venus is here it's in libra or it is here that means my spouse is like that i don't think yes. that is true because mm. if you take that every planet represents the karaka in a literal sense then mm. everybody should have their planets in aries mm. because then everybody will have a sun everybody's sun will Correct. get exalted there so that means Correct. aries should have been the exaltation for every sign no, but that's Correct. not the case which means Correct. that when you say that venus is exalted in pisces it necessarily doesn't mean that your wife or your husband will be like that it means mm -hmm. that you and the behavioral dynamics are like that yes so and then when you are good 
you will also attract a person who is like that so that is what i say and that doesn't mean that if venus is in pisces that your wife will not have any traits of pisces that will not happen because if you have then your wife also has to have that trait then only you will get attracted to each other otherwise it will not happen you know babajit i am going to uh, change uh, change the order of the questions yeah. uh, which i have written down in my notebook you have a you have a video called secret of ascendance okay and uh, all those who have not watched this video called secret of ascendance on exotic astrology you must go and watch this uh, <laughs> video on secret of ascendance because that tells you how how you must behave if you 